sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter, the Lord is with you. Mary was deeply disturbed by the angel's greeting. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. The power of the Holy Spirit is with you. You are to conceive and bear a son who will be named Jesus. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. From the poem, Mary Darkness, by Jessica Powers. I wait in Mary's darkness, faith's walled place, with hope's expectancy of nativity. I knew for long she carried me and fed me, guarded and loved me, though I could not see. But only now, with inward jubilee, I come upon Earth's most amazing knowledge. Someone is hidden in this dark with me. Mary set out at that time and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth, her cousin. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! As soon as Elizabeth heard Mary, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a loud cry and said, Blessed are you, Mary, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Who am I that I should be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? The moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made by her Lord would be fulfilled. From the writings of Jan Richardson, Hope starts small, even as a seed in the womb, but it feeds on outrageous possibilities. God invites us, like Mary and Elizabeth, to step out with sometimes inexplicable faith, trusting that we, too, will find sustenance. The time came for Elizabeth and Zechariah to have their child, and she gave birth to a son. When their neighbors and relations heard that the Lord had shown her so great a kindness, they shared their joy. On the eighth day, when they came to the temple with the child, they were going to name him Zechariah after his father, but Elizabeth spoke up. No, he is to be called John. Zechariah, who could not speak because he did not believe in God's promise, felt his speech return. He said, His name is John. The child grew up, and his spirit matured. The child will fulfill the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. May God's path straight. Every valley will be filled in. Every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened, and rough roads made smooth. All shall see the salvation of our God. At this time, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. So Joseph and Mary, who was with child, set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem. While they were there, the time came for her to have a child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. Mary wrapped the baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
howling wind of a blizzard, not the crackling of snow underfoot, but the actual falling of snow. We heard it one night, a soft whisper between footsteps. We stopped, switched off our flashlights, and just listened. All around us in the darkness, we heard the gentle fall of snow on snow, no wind, no sound, but the snow. Have you ever heard Christmas? Not the traffic noises in the city, not the bells and hymns and carols, beautiful as they are, not even the laughter of children as they open their presents, but Christmas itself? Have you been by yourself and just sat and listened to the silence within, patiently, without letting the mind race to the next Christmas chore? Perhaps if you have, you felt the pulse of all humanity beating in your own heart. Perhaps if you noticed an outflowing of love for all your brothers and sisters on earth, a soft sense of oneness with all that live. Silence of a snowy night, listen intently, holding your breath, and you may hear snow on snow, serene, alone, undisturbed by thought. Listen to the silence in your heart, and you may hear Christmas. In the countryside, close by to the manger, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took turns watching their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Listen, do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. From the words of Meister Eckhart, what good is it that Christ was born 2,000 years ago if Christ is not born now in your heart? I believe in God, but do I believe in God in me? I believe in God in heaven, but do I believe in God on earth? I believe in God out there, but do I believe in God with us? Lord, be born in my heart. Come alive to me this Christmas. Suddenly, there was a great throng of angels praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest! Peace to all on earth. When the angels had left, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him, and everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. The shepherds then left, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. Kawanaki, following the star can be both a joyful and arduous journey. Sometimes the star shines brightly, the promise seems certain. Often the star disappears, clouded over, hidden from view, and the pilgrims grope blindly, grow discouraged, get weary, give thought to settling down, to forgetting the promise. One thing is certain, all pilgrims need nourishment to sustain the journey. An occasional oasis for the spirit is essential. A time to feast on the refreshing waters, 
the retreat of the spirit in order to get strength to continue the pilgrimage through darkness, starshine or not. Jesus was born at Bethlehem in Judea in the days of King Herod. Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. They said, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have read the signs in the heavens, and we have followed the star. We have come to pay homage to the new king and have brought him gifts. King Herod was perturbed by their announcement and spoke to them privately, asking them to send him word when they found the child. They left Herod's palace and they followed the star that they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother. And falling to their knees, they offered him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I bring the baby gold, for he too is a king. I bring him frankincense, for he is of God and is holy. I bring him both to prepare his body for burial. We have searched everywhere to find him, even Herod's palace in Jerusalem. He was shocked to hear the news of a new king. He tried to fool us into thinking he wanted to worship the child too, but we knew he was lying. We will go home by another route, so we don't pass his palace again. This stable is an unlucky place to find a king. But truly, this baby's destiny is for greatness. It is written in the stars that he is the promise foretold by the heavens. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. From the words of Howard Thurman, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with the flocks, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal those broken in spirit, to feed the hungry, to release the oppressed, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make a little music with the heart, and to radiate the light of Christ, every day in every way, in all that we do and in all that we say. Then the work of Christmas begins. The message of the Feast of the Epiphany announces to all people, everywhere, rise in splendor, your light has come, the glory of the Lord shines upon you. Let the work of Christmas begin, and let it begin with you. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was a traveling minister. But he never traveled more than 200 miles from where he was born, and where he did go, he usually walked. He never held political office. He never wrote a book, never bought a home, never had a family, never went to college, and he never set foot inside a big city. He never did one of the things usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He had nothing to do with this world except to the divine purpose that brought him to this world. More than 19 centuries have come and gone, and today he's a centerpiece of the human race. All of the legislative bodies that ever sat, and all of the kings that ever reigned, all of them put together have not affected the life of humankind on this earth so powerfully as that one solitary life.